Hey, if you have a dual cam Honda CB, you probably had charging system problems. Let RM Stater fix that for you. Hey, I'm Evan, Head of Engineering for RM Stater. Uh, today we're going to show you how to install our voltage regulator rectifier and a new starter solenoid starter relay uh, on a 1982 Honda CB750C. Uh, this process is the same for the 79 to 82 and 83 in some models. Uh, so follow along and we'll show you how to get started. Okay, so to start with, we're gonna check our charging system and uh, we already know it's bad on this bike, but let's see what that looks like. So we have our RM Stator uh, battery analyzer attached to the battery. Um, you'll see that we're monitoring our battery voltage here and it's showing us the load condition of the battery, or the charge condition, sorry, which is medium. It is definitely not fully charged, but the battery is okay on this bike. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and turn the key on and turn our kill switch on and we should get a battery warning now because we're pulling the voltage down. So I'm going to start it up and if everything was working well, we should be seeing oh, 13 volts or so, uh, somewhere around idle. And as we rev the motor up, we should be seeing uh, upwards of 14 or low 14s, uh, ideally 14 and a half or so, but these charging systems are not real powerful. So let's go ahead and start it up and see what it looks like. So we can see that we're getting no more than very low 12s out of our battery, which says we're not charging it at all. Uh, so that tells us that the charging system is not working, which we already knew. And now that we've confirmed it, let's go ahead and get started fixing it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, replace our uh, voltage regulator and the starter relay since they're both in the same spot. Um, I went ahead and removed the seat, as you can see. Uh, it's just a couple 12 mil bolts here at the back to remove the mounts. And then I popped off the side cover. So our regulator is back behind here mounted to the battery box and then our starter solenoid or starter relay is right here. So to make room for everything, we need to go ahead and disconnect our connectors here. Um, I've already done that, so I'm just going to get them out of the way. Move one of the regulator plugs, the harness plug. We have our two igniter boxes for the ignition. Okay, so I've got all those done and I'm gonna tuck this part of the harness out of the way up here. Okay, and then from there I can remove our uh, starter relay. So I went ahead and unplugged this guy, the connector for it. And then make sure before you do this next step, make sure you disconnect the negative terminal of your battery. You want it totally disconnected because you have live uh, battery connection up here at the starter relay and you do not want to risk shorting that to the frame. So I've already gone ahead and disconnected the negative terminal of the battery. Now there's uh, 10 millimeter nuts that hold uh, the uh, wires, the ring terminals to the posts on the relay. I've already removed those. You can just use a wrench and I'm going to take off the starter side and the battery side and then I can just pull the relay off in its rubber uh, kind of bracket. Okay, so that's out of the way. Now I have some more room. Uh, I can get to the regulator. So the regulator mounts with a 10 millimeter nut on each side that also attaches its brackets that hold on the starter relay. So I'll remove the left bracket and I'm gonna remove the nut for the right side. There's the right bracket. Our turn signal relay is attached, so I'll just set it up here. Okay, there's our regulator. So you also want to make sure right on the other side of the battery is the stator connector side of the regulator. I've already unplugged it and fished it through the hole there. Make sure you do that so it's loose. And here's our second plug for the ignition switch and battery power side. Now I can slide off the old one, set it out of the way. Okay, now I'll take our new regulator. It slides right onto the posts in the same location. I want to go ahead and put the brackets back in the same spot. Okay, there's one. Put its nut on. And then the left bracket goes back in place. Put its nut on. And then uh, you want to go ahead and tighten those guys up. They're 10 millimeters. You can put all your switches back in place through the switch, or sorry, switches, the uh, connectors back in place through the holder on the right side. And route your wires back in the same place. And then you can go ahead and plug your regulator back in. And then to attach your new starter relay, um, its connector is the same. 
this four pin connector just plugs right in and then you're going to attach uh, your battery side and your starter side to the posts use the included nuts to tighten them up and then you put it back on its bracket uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do all that and then I'll show you how it looks finished up all right, here's everything reinstalled. We got a regulator in place, our starter relay in place, and we have all of our connectors uh, plugged back in and in place. So that's about it. It's a real simple job. Uh, and then make sure you check uh, your charging system to make sure your new regulator is working great. We'll show you how to do that in just a second. All right, so when you do any charging system work, make sure you check that your system's working well when you're done. Um, so we have our uh, RM Stator uh, battery tester and charging system analyzer plugged into the battery, and we're monitoring the battery voltage. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on, we're going to start it, and uh, with this system it's not real powerful at idle, but we should be seeing the battery charging, so a little over 13. And we don't have a fully charged battery here, so we're not going to see peak uh, voltage, but we should be seeing low 14 volts or right around there um, with all of our new parts installed. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're not charging much at idle, which is normal for these guys. As soon as we rev it up a little bit, we're seeing low 13s. Perfect. So at about 5,000 RPM or so, we should be seeing over 14 volts, and we are. So we got a good working charging system on your bike. Make sure you do that test just to be sure everything's working well before you get it back on the road. Hey, thanks for checking out our video and seeing how to uh, fix up the charging system and ignition system on this uh, Honda CB750. Uh, make sure you follow along, uh, like our YouTube channel, subscribe, uh, leave us some comments, let us know any other uh, bikes, parts, uh, questions you have, stuff you'd like us to, to show you how to fix. We have a lot of parts available and we'd love to show you how to put them on your vehicle. So check us out.